I love John Wick. It's exciting to be able to come out and spend time in LA with the people behind it and kind of learn how they put it together is amazing. It reminds me of the kind of action movies uh, my dad secretly showed me when I was far too young to watch them. Hi, I'm Mike Biffle, and I'm here today with the 8711 stunt team. Uh, these are the guys behind the amazing work across John Wick, uh, and we're gonna be learning from them. We're gonna be seeing some of their moves. I'm probably gonna get my ass kicked, and we're gonna see how we can incorporate some of those ideas uh, into the game. If I throw him, it gives me time to go, and I just grab my pistol, boom. Hi, I'm uh, Jonathan Eusebio from the 8711 stunt team. Uh, I served as the stunt coordinator, fight coordinator for the film series. And today we're gonna have Mike throw us around the room and then we're gonna kind of teach him in the like kind of the tactics and like mindset that John Wick does for the movies. We'll give him a little taste of what, you know, how John Wick comes and recognizes the problem, sees the problem, solves the problem. That's kind of the John Wick style, right? He sees it, he goes, oh crap, I gotta figure this out. Uh, my hand's bust, I can't use this hand. I gotta, you know what I mean? Good. Yes! So I'm a storyteller. Uh, my games um, often focus on that and, and telling these interesting stories. And John Wick was such an amazing opportunity. This universe that's fantastical and mythical, has these larger than life characters, secret society, all that good stuff, that, that meaty, meaty story stuff. And I wanted to tell a story that kind of translated that universe into a games context. We were working on a bunch of other concepts for games and then Good Shepherd came to us uh, with this idea of potentially making a John Wick game. I didn't believe it at first. I'm a massive action movie fan. When we got that opportunity, we just dove in. We started building uh, prototypes and experiments. I was very cautious because I didn't want to make a bad John Wick game because this is important. This is a this is a film franchise that matters. So all I want you to do here is like, if he goes to the shoulder, I want you to take step to the side, almost like this hand, takes the place of your shoulder. Let him come to you, yes. We wanted to build a, a game and an approach to playing that was completely focused on being John Wick. It's a good transition from the film world to the video game world. It's not, it's not like I watch a video game, I go, oh, they didn't watch them. It's nothing from the movie. Now they can actually be John Wick. So I just move my shoulder and I back step. See, and you end up in neutral position. Yes, just like that. See how, that, see how yeah, easy that felt? Yeah. When choreograph, you have to figure out what style, of, what style of fighting or what style of movement we're going to use. And from the very, very beginning, I mean, the filmmakers wanted to make it like based off judo. So judo, it's all based off momentum. So when you're watching John Wick, the thing that strikes you first about the fight scenes is the momentum, is the energy, that kind of forward push through the space. That's part of all of the films. Uh, but we also wanted to get that sense of strategy of decision making. So that's a balancing act because we don't want to, you, we don't want to make a game that's so slow that you're making decisions and it doesn't feel like it has the energy of that action scene. But we also didn't want to make a game which felt like a dumb shoot em up. He's basically moving so one, he knows what's behind him at all times and having something between him and more threats. So all his choreography or all his movements, there's a purpose to everything, there's an intent. And from here, almost just grab his, like palm his, there we go, let's go to that. And let's just walk it, one, two steps, yes. Remember, John Wick always moves. Yes, see, good, yeah. A really key moment, and it's only a few seconds that I really kept going back to while we were making the game, was in the first movie, a moment where John's out of bullets, so he stuns an enemy, gives them a moment of pause where they can't attack him, reloads his gun, and then shoots and finishes that character. That was one that I kept coming back to as we need to have something like this in the game. So we just wanted to make sure we're coming from a place like tactically it feels correct because those little nuances, those details is what law enforcement guy, military guy, they look at that stuff. They go, oh, he didn't really train. He's missing those little nuances. And those little nuances are the most important. Whatever the, the empty spaces, that's like the reload, the gun stuff. That's where the gun food comes in too. You know, because otherwise I would just be out here shooting everybody. The fun of it is you're in close quarters, you're getting surrounded, you have to change your angles. So what we did was we built this system of interrupts and stunning where uh, you can, as a, as a player, if your gun's out of ammo, you can literally do that in our game. You can stun an enemy with a quick punch. That's gonna take him out of action for a short space of time, which is gonna give you time to reload your gun. Then we add depth to that with different moves that have different durations of stun. Uh, so it might be the case that you can actually take someone down, uh, right down to the ground, and it's gonna take them a while to get back up. That's gonna give you more than time just to reload your gun. You can take out their two buddies behind them uh, while they're still staggering back up. Now from here, this hand that's on his face, I'm gonna almost make a circle, like a big circle like that. See? See, everything's big. Yeah. Then from here, I'm gonna hit him in the kidney. 
Then I'm gonna make another circle with this hand. I break his arm. Then I use this as my fulcrum. So now your 180 is not from the wrap. It's from my shoulder. It goes back to where I started. The replay was something, uh, it was actually something that came from uh, Lionsgate Games and from the uh, filmmakers, was that they were seeing this game that was cool and strategic and kind of let you play as John Wick, but crucially you weren't getting the, ex the experience of being John Wick in the movie. Uh, we wanted to give a mode to the game and an ability to the game to let you see a fight you've just taken part in and that you've just kind of choreographed through your own play as essentially a little movie. Uh, and that's what the replays are. And we had to do a lot of work to build that up, uh, but we're really happy with where they went. And action! That's it. Nice. Awesome, dude. That's great. Thank you so much for your hey. time, man. I appreciate it. Pleasure, man, pleasure. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> but I'm tired. I just want to give you a little glimpse of like, you know, what we do in the film and how we kind of, our thought processes and how we do these things. That's the thing, is bringing that thought process to bear. A, it's going to help us with the animation, but B, it tells us how we're going to teach the players to play the game. Exactly. We want the player thinking in that way. We want the player making those tactical choices. Yeah. It's going to be great. Oh, you did a good job, man. <laughs> As it shows. I'm a little hard. Yeah, no, I've worked hard. <laughs> no one can say I didn't work hard. Right, really good, really good <laughs> Thank job. Thank you, man. All I appreciate right. it. Mike and his team got that right? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. I, I kind of want to play it right now.